<laughs> and Dirty Chocolate, who's also cool. Dirty yeah. Chocolate. Woo! Hey, can you guys hear us okay? Yeah. yeah. Because if to us, it just sounds like a kind of cacophony of echoes. So if you can hear it, I'll just make sure I can hear me too. What? I don't know. Um, hi. So are we ready to go? Sean, are we ro we're rolling. Okay. We're recording this so I can look back on it and be like, man, I really shouldn't drink at panels. <laughs> or I really should have drank more before this panel. It's going to be one way or the other. I'm almost certain. We're drinking uh, during the panel, and you should be too. So we got a huge squad up here. I'm going to introduce everybody and then hopefully relieve these folks to chairs at some point. Um, and holy shit, there's so many people I got to stand up. My name is DJ Cuntman. Hello. I've been going to MAGFest was my very first convention many, many years ago. Now I tour the country going to anime, video game uh, conventions and expos and festivals playing music. It is my full-time job. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. The dream is real. You can do what you love for a living. It takes a lot of hard work and hopefully we'll be able to share some stories with you about how we managed to get to the different states that we are finding uh, some semblance of harmony between doing what you love and uh, paying the rent, or at least you know, buying pizza. Uh, I'd like to introduce everybody here on the stage, particularly the fine folks who are standing with their heels dripping off the risers. Uh, but I'll just go down the line. Uh, starting with the back, we have uh, DJ Micah, Michael Wright, all the way from England. We have a brand new producer on Game Chops, but a great friend, Chijolo. We have the very first sign on Game Chops, Pixelator. You might have heard him DJing all afternoon today. All the way from Italy, Rob KTA. Disco house master. We got the Tetra Case boys right here. Give it up for Tetra Case. You probably saw them spin at the Mega Manathon. We got Ralphington, the one and only. Who's that guy? Grimecraft. Hi. DJ Battle Superstar, James Landino. And the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who makes this all work, it's Balthazar. He's got a special treat for everybody today. We have a fun, interactive um, thing. It's either going to be sus or lit, and you'll be able to decide. But you may be wondering, Wait, really? cut man, what is sus or lit? And rather than explaining it to you, I'm going to play this video, and, and hopefully you can figure it out from the context clues. This is the original. We're, gonna, we're shooting part two, the season finale, uh, tonight. Is it sus or is it lit? Is it sus or lit? With Grimecraft. It's us. It's not a bird, it's a turtle. It's it's us. No, it's a bird. Oh, I, those are the legs, yeah, it's, it's sus. It's a circle about. It's sus. Is it sus or is it lit? Is it sus or lit? With Grimecraft. So there you go. I hope now you totally understand what sus or lit means. That's hilarious. So what we have today is an interactive thing you can do with your smartphone. Dumb phones don't like it. Uh, where we'll be able to vote if something is sus uh, or lit. I'll let Balthazar explain uh, what it is and how you use it. Oh, hi, guys. Hi. Get your, phone, get your phones and your tablets out. Take out your phone like you weren't already checking Twitter. Network. Well, we got two of them, actually. Because why do one when you can do it twice? It's better. I don't know. So look for lit sus left or right and join that. It's a Wi-Fi network. 
Our tech crew is fucking, that's this guy. I got I to gotta say, I didn't do this alone here, by the way. Uh, I got to shout out Lemon Drop out in the chat. They're on the yeah. crowd. I don't know. I'm used to Twitch, whatever. Out in the chat, whatever. But join that and uh, then go to whatever you use to browse the internet, your Safari or Chrome or whatever. I don't know. And, and just go to GameChops.com. Yo, and guys, should we be, should do this, too. Let's and do this. Uh, you should get a, a nice little page. Should look rather pretty. Like the beginning of the video. You have to go to the, the Wi-Fi and then pick Let's Us. I'm trying it too. Right? What's happening? I'm doing it now. <laughs> oh, I see it. Let's Us right. I'm on the left side. I'm on the I'm on the left, but the computer's on the right. This is a fun panel. Look, everyone's on their phones. This yeah. is cool. <laughs> Game phones. So if, let me know. Do you got that pretty orangey thingy, that screeny doll? No? What happened? Did it poop? Did yeah, it poop? I'm not connecting. I'm on left is okay. Right is sus, confirmed. I'm on left on my. Mine went to louder for some reason. Oh, this I'm is okay why you do it twice because one always breaks. My left. Your left is working. Okay, so this is sus. <laughs> is it working? I don't know. Let's have a panel. Let's have a panel. We might have to have a panel. <laughs> well, Belfazar text this out. I don't know. Whatever. You know? It's, I mean, you're looking at the screen. I'm connected to Lit Sus left. Let me look here real quick. Wait, is this an actual internet connection? This is a connection to the Lit Sus app. Uh, <laughs> there's so many happening? people on this stage. Holy shit. Everyone can see, everyone can see how, tech, how you're teching right now. I'm totally teching. I'm going to tell you guys a story while this is going on. So I'll, t I'll tell you the origin story of DJ Cutman. How about that? You guys want to hear how this whole fucking thing got started? Oh, sorry, not safe for work language. None of us are at work right now, except for Balthazar, but he's okay. So um, back in many years ago, uh, I was working in upstate New York in a recording studio. <laughs> One person is like, upstate New York, yeah! That's where my cat lives. All right, all right, two, we got it. So I was working uh, as a recording engineer, uh, recording and mixing uh, hip hop and rap music. There's some woos, like that sounds like a really cool job, right? You're working in a studio, you're helping record new hits and making rap songs and all that stuff. Well, I can tell you that being a studio engineer is basically being a computer babysitter. Oh, we're getting there. We're slowly buffering. What, what could those emojis be? So you guys can let me know if you think this story is sus or that. So I was working as a recording studio engineer, making rap songs. I was going good. I did it for about four years, getting pretty good at it. Uh, rappers would come in. They'd give me a CD of beats or instrumentals or something like that. And then we would record over them. And uh, at night, after the, st after the sessions, uh, sometimes I'd take some of those beats or some of those samples that they would bring in and would overlay them over my uh, obsessive collection of video game music. And this was kind of like just a thing that I was doing. Like, I, you know, I had all these beats and drum packs and samples that rappers would bring in. And then I would drop them over um, Ninja Gaiden or Super Mario Land or something like that. Just for fun, you know. Um, so somewhere around 2009, 2010, uh, there was a robbery at the studio. And um, a computer was stolen. My laptop was stolen. And what happened is a client came in, paid for one session, which was 50 bucks. He brought like six rappers with him, which I thought was weird. Like, I mean, you're rolling with a big squad. Like, I understand we got a big squad, you know, it happens. Um, but only one of those guys recorded, which I thought was weird. You bring six guys in who are all supposed to be rappers, only one people record. And what happened is a couple of the other guys went around, checked out the studio, basically cased it, and then came back later that night and uh, stole some shit. One of those things was my laptop that had all those beats on it that I was telling you about. Um, it actually, by a true, a true, genuine miracle, genuine, I just, that wasn't on purpose. Um, by a true miracle, I was able to get my laptop back, which had my entire first album on it. And this is how I did it. I, uh, when the first guy who came in who brought everybody, he had to sign up with the manager and he put his girlfriend's cell phone number. Um, so the day after the robbery, I call up the number on the thing, being like, oh, well, I know what happened at this session. It was the only session that day. It was right after I went home. I call up, we'll just say his name is, uh, I don't know, Swayze. 
No, it was definitely like not a human being name. It was like a bunch of consonants like run together. So Swayze. S-W-A-Z-Z-A-Z-Z-E. So Swayze, I call him up and I'm like, boop, 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 boop. Yo, is Swayze there? This is Chris from the studio. And he liked to really boast about how he was going to be the next big thing in rap. So I get his girlfriend on the phone. She's like, mm -mm, Swayze not here. He's with Tony. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know where Tony is? And she's like, I don't know. You want his number? And I'm like, I, I do. Yeah, give me Tony's number. She's like, okay, it's one, two, three, four. So I write down Tony's number. I call up Tony. Yo, Tony, this is Chris from the studio. Is Swayze here? She's like, yeah, man, Swayze's over here. I can hear him go like, yo, dude, it's the guy from the studio, man. And he, he's, he's always gloating about how he wants to be a big rapper, so he was thinking like, oh. His friends are like, dude, this is the break. It's somebody calling you from a studio. Clearly they don't realize that like, I'm working for like $15 an hour like babysitting a Pro Tools computer. I'm not like making people superstars, I'm just recording rap records. So he passed the phone to me, and I guess he didn't like brag about this theft or anything, or maybe he wasn't even the guy who did the theft, his friends did, but whatever. So the phone gets handed to Swayze, and I hear this. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, Swayze, you stole uh, my laptop, and it has every song I ever wrote on it, and uh, that shit is broken, man. You can't even sell it. I, want, I really want you to bring it back. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I was like, dude, we do have cameras, man. I know that you stole this computer, and uh, this is upstate New York. It's not like we're gonna get the SWAT team coming to your cell, your girlfriend's cell phone number. Like, please bring me the computer, dude. Uh, that shit's not worth anything. Uh, I won't even charge you for that one session. Just like, please bring me my computer. And he goes, um, whatever, man. It hangs up. So I go back to freaking out, you know? It's been about 14 hours of freaking out. Um, pacing around the studio, I called the manager and I said this happened and she was like, well that's what you get for recording rap music after 8 o'clock. I'm like, dude, these people have work, come on. And then a buzz comes through on the buzzer, on the thing. We had an ugly old ass buzzer so it wasn't like pretty, it was like, just some, like, some ground noise like Susser. Like, so go to the door. Open it up. There's my old ass MacBook Pro just sitting on the floor. Yeah, it was a real genuine miracle. And it was, it had the duct tape on it, keeping it together just like I left it. All the files were there. The battery was dead. It lasted like three or four minutes, so uh, that's normal. Um, and the craziest thing is two weeks later, Swayze shows up at the studio. I don't know if his name was Swayze, but Swayze shows back up, not in the studio, but like outside. Like, you know, I normally get, uh, get in for sessions around like seven or eight o'clock, so I'm going there and I see this guy, and he's like clean shaven, and has a haircut, and has those like cool, but kind of stupid ass, like peaceful beads on, and this was like, he was not like in his gangster attire when he showed up with like his six homies who stole like the, the MacBook and the G5. And he goes, yo, man, I just want you to know, like, sometimes this rap shit has a bad influence, and I really didn't even mean to mess you up, so uh, I'm sorry, dude. And I was like, well, thanks for returning my computer, dude. That was like, like my life's work, my brand new thing, and, and what turned out to be my whole life. And he's like, yeah, man, I just want you to know, like, I got caught up in some shit and yada yada. And I was like, well, thanks, so that's pretty awesome. And uh, then he left, and I was like, I hope I never see you again, man, <laughs> fuck. Uh, and I never did, which is nice. But by that grace of miracle and me just genuinely, I didn't call up his girlfriend and threaten her. I called up and just like asked to talk to him. I got him on the phone. I was like, please give me that back, that useless thing with all my work on it. And he did. But the sad kind of thing about it is that the experience had happened and the robbery was reported to the police and all that shit. And the manager had decided to close down the recording studio. So I lost my job. It was a $15 an hour job, like it's not a big, like, oh, it's like $15 an hour for like 10 hours a week, it's like, it's, it's all right. Um, but I had that computer with all those beats on it and all those samples that everybody brought in. So I started DJing. I started taking that exact computer out on the street. I put my monitor speakers inside of my cat carrier. It had like a mesh side, so, you know, so the cat can like see out and be like, I really hate going to the vet, but at least I get a view. You know, 
Um, so I put my monitor speakers in the cat carrier. I put like a surge protector and an extension cord. And I would take my MacBook out and sit at like the a gazebo, you know, like just like sitting up here with my laptop, just like, all right, everybody, I'm gonna play Chrono Trigger now to everybody going to the pizza store over there or like running into happy hour and I'm playing my Chrono Trigger beats and it'd be cool. And uh, I did that for like months. Like, cause I, I didn't have a job, I didn't have anything to do, you know? So like as a coping mechanism, I turned to the only thing I got out of that experience besides like my $150 a month or whatever, um, which were these rap beats and this video game music that I had. And uh, I did that for, I don't know, maybe like seven or eight months. I put together my first album. And since uh, the whole album were beats, chopped up samples was the term, chopped and screwed. Uh, they were little chops of game music. I decided to call my very first album Game Chops. And uh, little did I know, years, years later, it would be this big, beautiful record label host to so much awesome talent and so much great video game music. We went from, yeah. We went from little Woo! choppy samples made in the upstate New York, literally robbed recording studio to uh, the world's largest video game, licensed video game remix label in the whole world. So that's really, really cool. So I guess the moral of the story is, it's good to work hard, it's good to be honest and true to people, even if they done you wrong. And it's good to reload the page when your tech guy says, come on, man, let's get these icons loaded. <laughs> is it is dot it dot sus dot or dot lit? That is quite a URL. <laughs> Yo, let's just play cat videos the rest of, the, of this panel. Yeah, so that's the story of DJ Cutman. And then I went to MAGFest for the first time, and I was like, holy shit, there's a people outside. These people who like this stuff go outside. And I guess they don't really. They go into a hotel. <laughs> but... Uh, I had never been around so many people who liked the same kind of music as me, and it really kind of was like, I knew I had to do something for this scene, and I knew that what I had been making these past few years, working in the studio on my very first album, uh, uh, you all were the people who might enjoy it. And uh, I found enough people who did, and then I found people who share my interest in video game music, and, uh, and now it's my full-time thing. So that's the story. Hope you liked it. <laughs> I'm working, but I'm, uh, if it doesn't work soon, I'm just going to call it. Okay. Uh, you guys want to tell a story? Technology. That was a good story, <laughs> Gramcraft. Thank you. <laughs> Gramcraft, do you want to say uh, how you quit this job that everybody wants but you hated? Yeah. All right. Let's hear Gramcraft's story. All right, I have a stupid story. So I, I'm also a full-time music producer and video game DJ. Um, people are like confused about that sometimes because I used to be a video game developer. Uh, I used to work with this guy <laughs> um, and a bunch of other people. Uh, the studios made like Guitar Hero, Rock Band, music video games. Uh, I did, I worked at like Square Enix. Um, that people thought awesome. that was really cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I, I love those video games. Well, making video games is not that cool. In my opinion. I was an artist, so it's, it's a little different. So people are like, Grimecraft, you were an artist? I'm like, yeah, I wasn't always a music producer. I've been playing music for over 15 years. But um, yeah, anyways, I'm going to do the condensed version of the story, which is <laughs> um, I was working my favorite job making music video games, and uh, layoffs happen in the video game industry all the time. Uh, and I was laid off. And I was like, shit, this sucks. But luckily, when big layoffs happen and, uh, you know, people like Kotaku and IGN cover it, uh, you get phone calls from every other company who's thirsty for people looking for work. So I got a call from a company called Crystal Dynamics. Um, they're a Square Enix company now. Um, to work on the new Tomb Raider game. And they said, we'll fly you out tomorrow for an interview. So usually the process takes like a month. And you have to like do art tests. You have to prove to them you're good enough. They just didn't give a shit. They're like, you, you can do it. All right. Um, <laughs> so I flew out there, um, and it seemed really cool. And it was you know working on one of my favorite game franchises. So I thought that was a great idea. Like, oh wow, I'm I'm passionate about this. Like, oh, we're gonna give you a bunch of money, and uh, you know you're gonna be one of our like lead people. I'm like, cool. That sounds tight. That so, sounds tight. Yeah. It, it seemed lit, but it was actually sus. What? 
Um, Just so. like this idea to set up hot spots in the panel room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I'm going to drink before this part. It's a, you know, we all have different ways of coping, you know? Yeah. So the first thing I got there, and um, they're like, welcome to the team. You want dinner? And um, Who doesn't? I love dinner, but, like, <laughs> not at work. work. Having dinner at work is not very cool. Um, what that means in the video game industry, or pretty much any industry, is that you're crunching and you're working heavy hours and never going to be able to go home. So my first day, I was there till 11 p.m., um, and that's as late as I could stay, because I actually had to commute two hours to get there, too. And this is right after moving to San Francisco. Within one week, they're like, you're starting next week. I'm like, how do you move to San Francisco in one week? And they're like, figure it out. I'm like, okay, well, if I do that, like, see, I'm, I'm also like a DJ, and like, I had my first actually tour, and I want to do that. And they're like, okay, well, you can take that week off, but, because I originally wanted to start after that. Anyways, I'm at the company, first day, I crunch, whatever. Anyways three weeks of crunching. We just kept, it didn't stop. It was like, okay, I'm working every single day. I'm working every single weekend. And everyone here I have nothing in common with. They're all old people who don't even play video games and I don't, I don't, this is not cool. Um, it was, yeah, it was sus as hell. It was sus. <laughs> the only person that kept me there was uh, my boss who was like actually a chill dude. Um, anyways, this was a week before the first Grimecraft tour ever. And uh, I was like, thank God, like, I can just get the fuck out of here. I don't, like, uh, I just really need this break. And my producer comes up to me and he says, hey, so that uh, vacation you're going on, like, we're going to, like, uh, just comp you for the days and we'll do it, like, after the game is shipped. And you guys know the new Tomb Raider just shipped, like, f three months ago, right? So. <laughs> How long ago were you working there? <laughs> like two years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I just would have died. Um, and I was like, oh, well, that's not that cool. Um, all right. Uh, and I just was really uncomfortable. I feel like that was an accurate depiction of how it went down. You're like, all right. Yeah, it was uh, like, okay. I, don't, I, okay. I didn't say okay. I was just like. Oh. You said some stuff to me. Yeah. I you, did, you definitely you. said it. <laughs> So I acknowledged him, I had lunch with my boss, and I said, hey Matt, I'm gonna leave today. I'm, I'm not giving my two weeks, I'm just gonna leave today, and that's it, I'm, I'm done. He was like really supportive, actually. He was like, you know what, I hate my job too. This place sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit. Yeah, he was the most lit. And um, I was like, cool, I'm glad you agree. And I know this is gonna hurt the team, and I know it's gonna hurt the schedule of the product, but Fuck this game. We all know it sucks. <laughs> some real game That's industry. That's some real AAA game shit. <laughs> they all suck. And you guys buy them. Stop pre-ordering games, you idiots. Hey. <laughs> Anyways. So what was it like transitioning into full-time music, not having a schedule and just doing your thing and playing shows? Well, the first thing was like, I kind of, it was the happiest day of my life when I quit my job. I like cried for like the first time in like 10 years, but happy. It was like, <laughs> great. And then I was like, w what do I do? Um, and you know, I, I went into the tour and it was really cool. And I was like, cool. Now I just have to do this all the time. And then I got kind of scared for a second. I was like this, you know, maybe that was a rash decision, but anything is better than, you know, working my life away for no reason and traveling hours a day to just go to a bed and sleep in San, like, why do I even live anywhere? I should just live at the office. Ooh, <laughs> I actually like to call that um, that thing after you quit your job. You get really excited, you cry for a day <laughs> or so, and then you're super stoked. And then this panic sets in, but it's not like a freak. Oh my gosh, panic! I have to. I really got to do all my laundry because my underwear is out, and <laughs> it's getting really cold tonight. So I really need this underwear. It's more like this quiet ground noise. I call it the year-long panic when you stop a schedule and you're working full-time creatively. Now, this could happen to freelancers that don't have a schedule that are doing your kind of work. Yeah. Or it could happen to somebody who quits their job, like Grimecraft did, and goes into full-time creative, who has some foundation there already. And the year-long panic is not something that you can rush through. It takes, at least for me, and I, I saw it with Clark as well, and uh, Ben, who's not here, but it also did the similar thing, quit his shit job to do music full-time. It's a full year of calibrating to not having any schedule imposed on you. Exactly. Where you, where you could sleep until 4 p.m., 
or you can work until 4 a.m. Typically, actually, those things usually kind of go together. So. <laughs> they do. Um, and it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling, and it'll feel great while you're working. Um, but then, for me at least, it got really anxious when I wasn't working. And um, the only time that I truly felt at peace, and this is going to probably be really sad, is when my computer was exporting something. Because yeah. it was the only time where I didn't have to do shit, and I couldn't do shit. It's like, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, After Effects, there, it really needs all that RAM. So uh, I'm going to play Pokemon X and Y for the next 28 and minutes and 34 seconds, 33 seconds, 35 seconds. Oh, this is actually great. Yeah. <laughs> Let me open up more Chrome windows. Hold on. <laughs> Those are important times. I mean, that, that downtime is really important. Honestly, I don't, like, I work when I feel inspired these days. Um, I, uh, when I, I, and when I first quit, I was really scared, and I, it's weird. Every time I quit a job or something gets out, I get a call from a random person who wants me to do something. So actually, the day after I quit, I got a call from Intel, and they're like, hey, um, we're making this game with this weird studio. We need a creative director. Can you do it? I'm like, how did you get my number? <laughs> <laughs> But I was like, what's it, like, what, what kind of money? And they, the, the numbers were stupid, so I was like, okay, whatever. So it's three months, whatever. They paid me way too much money. I didn't have to give a shit about my job. It was like, this is really easy. I've made a video game before. <laughs> yeah. um, so I did that as like kind of like a padding, like, okay, I can do this. I, I won't be crunching. I work, you know, normal ass hours and, you know, lead some people in Germany and this small local team that doesn't really know what they're doing. <laughs> Is that that kind of sounds like hell. Is that good or bad? When no, they it was it bad. It was so <laughs> yeah. sus. It was the sussest. Um, but they paid me, and that's, that was cool. It was like, all right, well, this gives me the uh, chance to fail completely as Grimecraft for a full year. I can make zero money for a full year, and I can just be Grimecraft and fuck off. Luckily, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, things worked out within about two or three months. I started being able to pay my rent with my music money. And music is yeah. just all about you know, all these small streams of revenue coming together in a bunch yeah. of different places, especially right. for us video game people that, um, you know, we do Twitch, we do uh, sales, album sales, we do shows, we do cons, we work for game companies to do shows. Freelance work and yeah. stuff. Yeah, That's actually a great opportunity to plug the fact that we have a merch table back there. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how we pay, got the gas in the car to get here. And that is how we're hoping to order the pizza tonight. <laughs> uh, we're also doing uh, buy two, get one CDs because I really want like more pizza than I can eat and not a little bit less pizza than I want. So uh, before you leave, you know, check out the merch. JR is back there. What's up, JR? We got some good stuff. We got USB drives with stuff on it. And uh, I know nobody likes the like, thanks for listening to our last song. Check out the merch table. I know, I know that nobody wants that, but uh, it's really important. And yeah. the way that you know, we make our living is by support from our fans. And... Um, one of the great things I think we've been able to do with Game Shops is uh, make uh, some merchandise that not only helps fuel us and uh, sustain this whole thing, but uh, is cool and is stuff that we all own and want to have in our house. Yeah. And um, I'm probably the biggest Game Shops fan because I have like multiple copies of every CD because every once in a while like a, a different order will turn out a little different. And I'm like, ooh, I need the redder version to... <laughs> So anyway, yeah. But what Clark said, um, the small streams of revenue is really key. Um, it's, it's easy to like look at somebody online, um, Smooth McGroove, who we just collaborated with. Any Smooth McGroove fans in the audience? Um, yeah, we he's Skrillex. awesome. We beat and Skrillex on iTunes. We did. Our album, Smooth McGroove Remix, beat out Skrillex and Diplo on the <laughs> iTunes dance charts. And we're nominated. And we're nominated for the best uh, remix fan cover album of the year by the Game Audio Network Guild. Basically the Grammys for video game music. For Smooth McGroove Remix, so it's really, really awesome. That is lit. That Thank is you, lit. Thank you, that's true. I was um, promised I will drink when anyone says I, that. What I wanted to say is it's easy to like see a big guy making a bunch of uh, content on the internet and say, oh, well, Smooth McGroove's cool, but he gets all this money off his Patreon or he gets so many views on YouTube and like, Bish, if, you, if I was getting a million views, I could do it too. And I just want you guys to know, if you are getting a million views, that, that shit doesn't pay the rent. That might pay a rent for a month. But the way that we're all able to do it is these uh, giving uh, our fans opportunities for two big things. 
One, to get our content without paying anything. This is really important for me and a real big mission for game shops. If you don't want to spend any money on music, or you don't have any money, or you're in school and you don't have a budget to pay for your content, you can hear every single song we've ever done on the Game Shops YouTube. You can go on Spotify and hear all of our licensed remixes. You can go on SoundCloud and please repost, actually. Please repost. <laughs> we won't force you to, though. Repost and a lot of people force you to. Um, and then if you do have a little bit of money, uh, maybe you're working, maybe you have a good job, maybe you just have a decent job, maybe you have super low rent because you live in Orlando. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where's Ben? Uh, Where's ben? <laughs> And you want to give back to your favorite creators. We have method to do that. You can buy our albums on iTunes or through our distributor Louder. You could buy our CDs and take a cool thing home with you from MacFest or a convention. Uh, you can pledge on our Patreon and get cool rewards. Like every single mix that I ever thought wasn't really good enough to post on SoundCloud, all my Patreons get them. Also, I'm sorry I totally cut off that Mega Man track like three minutes before it was done. Somebody wanted to make an announcement. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> so giving our fans ability to get our content for free and also support us when we're able uh, and then pr just making the best damn work that we, uh, that we can you know working really hard and doing, and doing you know making the content that we ourselves would like when I started DJ Cutman no joke I don't want this to like shout me out or think I was making the music for me like I was making the beats for me and I was like, I'm gonna master these so loud that no rapper's gonna be able to rap over them. Yeah. And if you try to rap over DJ Cutman Volume 3, sorry, you can't. It just yeah. doesn't sound good. That shit is too loud. Whoops. <laughs> if, you need, uh, if you need unmastered mixes, though, you can hit me up on Twitter. <laughs> I'll send it to you. I actually call that locking out. Because after I got robbed by a group of rappers, I was like, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't want to do anything for these people anymore. Yeah. Just in general. Uh, of course, my tone has changed once I met amazing nerdcore rappers like MC Frontalot and Mega Ran. Yeah. Producers like Kay Murdoch who really know what it means to make Ooh. a beat. Mega Ran, shout out Mega Ran. He's here, right? Yeah. He is here. He's playing a show, I think, tonight or tomorrow. He's tight. Tonight. He's, He's tight. It's people. tonight. Yo, see Mega Ran and Kay Murdoch. Seriously, those are the guys who I was like, nerdcore can be good? Yo. Final Fantasy rap songs can be dope? <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. I started rambling again, I'm sorry. Did I finish my story, guys? I, yeah? Is it okay? Uh, let me take one question right now. All right, great, there aren't any. Ralph, you wanna tell a story? Um, how's it going, guys? This is Ralphington. Ralphington has a bit of a different background than the rest of us. Why don't you tell us where you came from and what's going on now? Um, I'm origina uh, I originated from the Philippines. Um, Hey. This is uh, nine years ago, 10 this coming December. Um, we moved, me and my brother and my parents, my mom and dad, um, to America like around 2006. And the first four years that I stayed here in America, and it's in Jersey too, like Jersey sucks. <laughs> like, it really does. Especially South Jersey. Like North Jersey is a little okay, but South just, it's, it's just bad. Like I'm like in Philly more than I am in Jersey. But uh, anyway, the first four years that I was there, I did not enjoy it. Uh, 17 years living in the Philippines was basically my life. All my friends, all my family, my relatives were there. And then suddenly, I'm just going to go to a different country that I didn't even know who there. Like, I didn't know people at all. I knew my aunt, my aunt, and my cousin, which was like one family. So... Um, Four years later, I really wanted to go back. Like, it was really bad. Like, I was getting depressed up to a point where uh, I was just listening to metal music a lot. And, and that's <laughs> I was so depressed, I was listening no, to metal. Just, like, I had to go to metal music just to, like, uplift myself, and that's really bad. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I got it's a lot really of sad. metal. Um, I used to be a really big In Flames fan. I, 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 I too. <laughs> like, like the, I think the last band I listened to was, like, Avenged Sevenfold, but... Um, oh, dude, it's too good. It's too good. <laughs> yeah, they're nice. That music is, like, broken. I know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I told my parents, I, I, I can't. I can't stay here. I was working as a bartender that time. Um, I didn't like the job because I was, like, an hour away from my job. And a lot of people knew... It's just the fact that a lot of people knew each other, and I didn't know anyone. And I 
went to listen to a bunch of music that my friend uh, told me about. And I started listening to it, and I was like, wait, is this from a video game? And he was like, yeah, dude. I was like, wait, people listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a remix from Frogger. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, he was like, yeah, dude, there's, like, there's this huge thing that you know, people go to. It's like MAGFest. And um, pe like, people go out and listen to all this kind of music. And I was like, really? Like people go out their way to like enjoy this kind of music. He's like, yeah, dude. So my my very <laughs> hi, Shiro, Shirobon, guys. Shiro <laughs> Yo, go to the main stage tonight. Does it start at midnight? What time does it start? What time does your show start? It's midnight. Yeah, midnight. Clark, you totally just derailed Ralph's story. He's telling his like his like so his like world changing story of him immigrating to America. You're like, yo, bro, what time's the rave? <laughs> <laughs> You see how much I've been so, drinking. <laughs> so I was, I, I went with my friend four years ago to my very first MAGFest. And I was like, oh my God, there's a lot of nerds here. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was the first time I saw uh, Chris Cutman. Really? With your, um, yeah, it was, it was that and then Anime Next. Oh yeah, you followed me around for a little bit. Then I was like, oh my God, this guy is everywhere with his silly bike gear, biker helmet. I, it was a skateboard helmet with skateboard a record helmet. taped on. That I wore that for a long time. You look like you Tony Hawk. You wore glasses too. You wore like shades. I wore, so, yeah, I, I actually started the costume thing because I was afraid of people seeing me. <laughs> Turns out that putting on a big freaking bright red costume with a, with a record taped on it is not a good way to hide. <laughs> nope. So uh, I, I started listening to his music and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And he's DJing with these nerdy music. So, um, fast forward two years later, um, I started DJing, um, but just for a bunch of clubs and uh, local spots in uh, Jersey. And then one time I saw Chris post on um, Facebook that um, he's playing uh, Bravely Default. And I was like, oh my god, I'm playing Bravely Default too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I told him, I messaged him, which this is me not knowing him yet. It's just a friend on Facebook. You know how friends on Facebook are. You don't really talk to them a lot. But um, I messaged him, not knowing that, knowing that he's not going to reply back. I was like, yo, dude, I, uh, I, so I just saw you posted uh, something really cool that you really like, uh, barely default, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I would totally appreciate it if we could work on something. At this point, I haven't like, really, really got into like, writing video game or re uh, uh, remixing video game music. Um, my very first track was like, I think it was either Earthbound or like a really bad chiptune version of the opening for Naruto. Um, <laughs> um, so I, mess I, messaged, I messaged Chris. I was like, Chris is not going to reply back. Two days later, Chris replied. And uh, I was actually on my way to work to Philly. I was in the train. And uh, I Chris was like, yeah, dude, uh, we can totally do that. What do you have? And at this point, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he's asking me what I have? I was like, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. Uh, I couldn't lie to him. So I was like, um, honestly, I haven't done anything to the, the ge with the game yet. I just enjoy the music. I just thought you'd like the idea. So he was like, yeah, dude, we can, uh, we'll talk it out. Like, and then like, a couple of days later, we met up at a really sus Starbucks. Yeah, um, I, uh, I, without knowing Ralph at all, yeah, this is just... He, get out, he got out of his way to I, I, like, rode my bike down to the Whole Foods <laughs> where he was working, and he's like, I get off break at 125, <laughs> meet me at the Starbucks, and I was like, oh, yeah, we're doing a sick video game music deal right now. This is going to be <laughs> awesome. What do you got? And uh, at that time, I guess, since we had talked to when we actually met up, uh, Ralph had done a little bit of programming on his 3DS, yeah. which I remember was kind of broken. Like it was it, kind of broken because I don't know if you guys have tried recording audio from your 3DS. It has like a limiter to it, and it just makes it everything like really distorted. Um, I showed him the track that I have done for Bravely Default. And when, there it is. We, when we decided to... This track? It's actually not that track, That's sorry. That Fuck. That's your track. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry for everybody who knows that track and knows what the drop sounds like. I, 
Everybody who doesn't, though, is probably so safe. I told, so I told Chris, oh, this is what I have. And then I told him, I don't want to do any of the drum tracks because I really hate writing drums. And, and uh, I was like, great, that's the only thing I know how to write. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, this is perfect. So I sent him one track. And then he you didn't asked, send it to me. You brought your 3D as to yeah. Starbucks, and, and I was I like listened to it. to it on my headphones, and I was like, all it's right, really I guess. Bad. So he was like, okay, great. Uh, let's continue this, and let's see what what you know what we can do with this. I think I actually recorded a scratch track at the Starbucks, and I started what later became this beat. Um, and there was a bunch of going back and forth, and yeah. actually getting like the proper parts. But this is this is what that very first beat sounded like uh, after Ralph and I went through it and did all this stuff. Two guys who had never really interacted in real life, you collaborating. You were so scared that your bike was going to get stolen outside. Well, it's Philly, man. I mean, <laughs> it's a new bike, too. <laughs> If I knew this track had a long intro, I would have started it like 15 seconds ago. Sorry. But, uh, yeah. So, after that, he wanted more, and he was like, let's, let's turn this into an EP. At this point, I got really, really excited that he wanted to turn it into an EP, like a four-track EP of the characters of Braille Default. And, and then, um, when we finished it, um, he messaged me again, and again, really bad timing. He messaged me while I was on the way to work, um, in the train, going underneath the, the sub, like, you know, underground. And he was like, I really like what we did here. I really enjoyed working with you. This really turned out great. I'm going to sign you. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to like shout in the train, but I just didn't want to like weird out all the people there. But if there was just me in that cart, I would have probably like broke one of the chairs. But um, yeah, and after that, since I've been with this group now, um, long story short of you know the emotional journey that I had to go here from the Philippines, uh, me wanting to go back literally just turned into me just staying here. Like, I don't want to go back. Through this awesome scene of video game music, working together with friends to make cool stuff, and uh, just being embraced by, it's honestly, the most loving, awesome scene there is, yeah. video games. It's all about you guys. It's, it's literally... It's literally lit. Yeah, it's... It's, it's actually not. It's, That'd be dangerous. Like, take it from me, who's not even, you know, still not, you know, accustomed to all, you know, the stuff here in America. It's still worth... This video game scene that we're at is worth staying for. Yeah. Um, so. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Ralph. All right, we have 17 minutes uh, left. I really want to do some Q and A. Yeah. I really want everyone to buy merch. I mean, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> uh, James, do you think you can speed run your story? Because you also have a pretty unique story. You still are survive. You're a surviving artist in the video game music in the video game industry. How did that happen? Uh, well. <laughs> uh, I don't really know. Actually, I, I forgot. Know. I have to go back no, to work fine. on Monday. <laughs> well. Look, I, unlike these two guys, I never had a life-changing story. I didn't, ha no one robbed me. I, I still, <laughs> I still I like well, my job. My job's country. great. You live in Boston. Everyone already has everything they need up there. Yeah, I'm the last one left. Um, you are. It's true. But I got so, laid off. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It, it was better for me. It's lit. <laughs> But so I have a question for everyone here. So how many of you have played a game called Flash Flash Revolution? Yo, these guys. Fuck yeah. So when I was 11, I found that site, and that game kind of changed me forever. I'm going to just get a little closer to you. Get a little closer? Get cozy. Kiss mm. the mic. Be like. <laughs> you actually kissed it. That but so when I was 11 years old, I uh, found this site, and it was an amazing game. I was like, oh my god, this music is awesome. Like, the people are awesome. And I want to play this every single day. And that was the start of basically my music career, was playing Flash Flash Revolution, because I wanted to write music for that site, I, and I did. I, w I had an alias uh, called, a horrible, horrible name. It was called KGZ, but <laughs> KG's Kigs. I but, still like it better. Yeah. <laughs> I, speaking of which, I remember the first time I met Cutman, and I told him my artist's name, which oh, was I KGZ. This, I hate this story. I hate uh, it. Go ahead. No, <laughs> no it's funny, though, because I, I agree with you. It's so a you, side quest story. 
Go ahead. What did I say? What do you What do you remember me saying? Because I don't. Think I, I well, I just remember that the first time I met you, it was in Boston, and I told you my artist name was KGZ, and you're like, "Oh, yo, that name's stupid. You should change it." <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to believe that I said that, but you say those exact words every time you tell the story, so I must have just I must have just been a blurt moment. <laughs> now it's true. <laughs> but instead of changing your artist name, you just embraced your real pretty catchy name. Pretty catchy. James Blandino. James Claims Casino. <laughs> Jeans <laughs> Blandino. I mean, Lames Latino. There it is. James Blandino. Oh my God. It rhymes with lots of stuff that it doesn't actually rhyme with. <laughs> <laughs> but so I play this game and I started writing music for the site. And that was basically the start of what I'm doing now. Because at that moment, when I was like, like 11, 12, I knew that my life, I want to write music for video games. Like, and especially, I wanted to write music for rhythm video games. So I always I would write music for Flash, Flash Revolution, for Step Mania. I got a commission for a game called I Dance, some European arcade cabinet game. Um, and so it's kind of mind blowing that now I'm writing music for harmonics. Free, most recently, Amplitude for PS4. There you go. There you go. So best it, it's, songs in Amplitude. This so, guy. So I mean, in short, it's kind of a dream come true reality where. I followed my childhood dream and it just worked out. And the, the icing, the, 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 you know, the, the cherry on top is basically I get to perform that music live for you guys at like DJ Battle and like, you guys are awesome. Thank you. That show was lit. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're running, at, we're, we're running low on time. My, my It's nighttime screensaver has turned on. Let me turn that back, there you go. <laughs> Uh, I want to run down the line a little bit, and, and everybody can tell uh, uh, tell y'all what we're working on right now to get excited about. And then the last ten minutes of the panel, we'll do Q and A. Uh, then we'll all bum rush Jr. at the merch booth, and uh, there's a bunch of free stickers and stuff. And hopefully, we'll be able to afford pizza after the whole thing. Uh, so Tetra Case, man, you guys hey. have been quiet. What are you working on? You had that big hit banger remix of Little Big Planet on Smooth McGroove Remix. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Thank you. Woo! You've been Thank bringing you. the drum and bass. Yo, right now we're, we just added this guy to be our fourth member of Tetra Case. Elevation. Elevation. <laughs> Finally. Four you, you members. You made it to four. Yeah. And we're working on an EP that's hopefully going to be on a label that I can't mention, but Ooh. soon. Nice. Soon. Um... <laughs> You'll see. He can't You'll mention see. it. You'll see. I have two things working on for this year. Uh, obviously, me and Chris are going to be working on a second uh, remix album for Bravely Default, which is going to be Bravely Second coming out on April. Hey. So um, I'm really excited about that game. I'm so excited. Uh, also, besides that, I am working on a PlayStation 1 albums of all my favorite PlayStation 1 games, like um, the port of Rapper the Rapper, Crash Bandicoot. Hey. Um, Tomba, I love I love Tomba, um, uh, and um, yeah, it's gonna be great. Oh. So I uh, I have been made. Oh, ben, oh, oh my God. Benjamin Briggs. Oh His name is Tammy. So uh, me, I'm working on. Uh, you know, I, I I'm running the label, so I'm work, I'm helping facilitate everybody's albums. Um, the big thing coming out March 4th is a full-length Undertale remix album by a new artist called Holder. Woo! Some of you may know him as Major League Wobs. No? Memes. Well, I'm, if you guys know all the meme music, he made all the you memes. Know, you know Sandstorm with air memes. horns? That was him. The, the meme? Uh, I'll play one of the chill tracks during the next of the wrap-up. So we're doing that, and we're working on a bunch of uh, really exciting stuff for game shops coming up. I'm mastering everything. I'm usually tired or super into it. Those are my two modes. This is very tired or super into it. And right now, I'm a little bit of both, so that's cool. <laughs> um, I'm also working on DJ Cutman Volume 4. Yeah. Slowly but surely, I am, uh, I'm getting at least 20, 25 tracks together for a new edition of my chop-style video game remixes. So yay. But you, Grimcraft? Damn. Well... I'm gonna play oh. this softly. It's a soft one. Softly. Don't well, get nervous. That's cool. Play it. Um, I'm working on something really crazy. This is actually the first time I've announced it publicly. I'm working on a next gen music experience in VR. It's fucking awesome. That was a lot of buzzwords. Holy crap. Yeah. That you was a lot of buzzwords. Basically, I'm working on your future music experience. Um, it's Grand lit. The future. Like, you think Twitch is the future. Imagine that, but on your face. 
twitch on your face. <laughs> I've had that problem since I was a kid. It's lit. You, you guys, in March, you'll hear more about it. I'm doing a performance. If you're going to GDC, the Game Developers Conference, or South by Southwest, we're showing it off. And uh, it's, you'll know about it. Yeah. You'll know. I'll tweet about it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, literally just now during, the, during this panel, uh, an original song I had written uh, for a new label, uh, Nine Nine Lives, if you guys have heard them, it just dropped right now. So you should Three minutes ago. Three retweet. Minutes ago. Just been tweeted. Retweet. Uh, what about you guys? Want to mention what you're working on? You working? I I actually haven't asked this question to you, so I I don't know if you're ready to talk about it. Balthazar, Chijolo, you working on anything cool? Do you guys like Chrono Trigger? I got this little thing in the works. I got some friends helping me out with it. Hopefully, we'll see something later this year. I don't know. We're just gonna shit. Also, I don't know. Like, I might. We might take the sus or thing that totally didn't work today and put it on the internet, so you guys you use it. I don't know. Yeah. That would be lit. That would be that'd be an addition to you the wanna stream. Pass Mike, uh, Mike, Mike, uh, Rob. I've been holding this mic behind me as if someone's gonna accept it. So these guys came from across the. Okay, you go. The, the, uh, across the so, floor. Hey, I'm, I'm Mike, and I've been working on some more Undertale stuff. You probably heard some of it yesterday, maybe at the DJ battle. But I've got more to finish, so hopefully I'll be out soon. And also, I'm working on Zelda stuff too, so. Undertale. Hope Zelda. you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Rob. That's and probably Rob. You remember me because I wear a blue suit, so it's it's all right. I just in my cosplay you can play. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm actually nervous. It's my first panel. Well, what can I say? I've been with these amazing guys for three years now, and I'm totally like honored to be part of this big family. I'm working on a ton of projects. I'm working on my big album, Sounds of the Enders, which is like inspired by the Zone of the Enders series. And probably, probably you heard my latest Undertale remix of Death by Glamour, which is causing debate on the internet. Is this too slow? Is it too fast? He is not like conservative or anything like that. But I'm planning to release another, at least, Undertale remix. Thank that you. will incorporate Megalovania and the Asgore theme soon. So. I, think, I think we're all doing Undertale. Yeah. We got the bug. We got the bug. It's all too? Okay. Also, Chris yeah. is allowed uh, us to do anime okay. now, so I'm going to so, be doing a bunch of animes yeah, too. Thank you. Anyway. Yo, I got really scared when you guys started talking because I was like, no one's, no one's talking to any of those mics. What's going on? Uh, yeah, I'm working on a Sonic Adventure 2 remix with a buddy from Boston. Well, that's news for me. I love Sonic Adventure 2. Um, and I'm also working on a lot of songs from the albums that were being talked about. I'm working with Balthazar on a Chrono Trigger song. And... Yeah, who lives in Boston? One person. <laughs> Anyways, we're doing a Game Chops showcase in Boston uh, on March 5th. Fourth? Yeah. Fourth? It's the fourth. Thanks, Emily. I'm drunk. <laughs> March 4th and... <laughs> this is my fourth IPA tonight. All this right, was actually a game for me to drink a lot of beer. Uh, Chris said we have enough time, uh, a couple of more minutes for Q&A, so if anyone has any questions for any of us, uh, shoot yeah. it out. Let's do Q&A. Yo, JR, did you find the square reader, man? Okay, awesome. Cool. Uh, ben, Tammy. Hi. What are you working on, dude, in like I, a minute? I'm sorry I'm late. Tammy not good at time management. <laughs> Hi. Tim go to Cool Egg. <laughs> yeah. That's a good time. Uh, I made that remix. It was good. Ben has Game Chop's first million play oh, remix yeah. on YouTube. A million. A remix of Tim Shop. Oh, wow, 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 wow. All right, let's do speed run Q&A. No rambling. No Gotta telling me what you ate for lunch. Stand up with your questions, and, and you gotta get it out in like a second. Yo, you ready? Let's go. Come on. Okay, best tip for building a brand. Don't force it. That's a Ben Briggs song, actually. What Just happened? Do what huh. feels natural. Do what feels like comes easy, and then it's cool to change. Just change slowly. The Game Chops logo started as just the letters. It took me three freaking months to draw that controller. 
<laughs> but take your time. Yeah. Don't force it. If you don't feel particularly inspired, don't do it. Just use your name for now. And remember, anything you do, put it out there. If you don't like it, you can change it. Yeah. Next question. Come on. Come on. Finger man. Yo. Yo, what about... Ooh, what okay, happened? so I've done a Fantasy Star Sweet. Online remix or two, and I know. Um, so, basically, I'll probably do another song, but as far as albums go, we try to only do albums that are like... Uh, we say, is the character in Super Smash Brothers? <laughs> 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 and that's how we know if the album Wrecked. is out. It, it definitely helps. Uh, yes. Oh, that's, that's okay, I can go question. down the list and say that line. FL Studio, a 3DS, what's the name of that shit? Rhythmic uh, Retro? Korg, rhythm, rhythm Core Alpha and uh, uh, Korg MS10, uh, Korg DS10 it, Plus. Uh, I use Ableton Live and Pro Tools, Ableton. Most of you use Ableton. Ableton, FL Studio. We're all fake chip Logic. And, I, yeah, we use, it doesn't matter what you use. That's the real, that's the real yeah. lesson to answer that question. It doesn't matter what you use, it matters if you like yeah. doing it. Because if you don't like doing it, don't do it. Like anybody who's like, yeah, I really want to get into music. I think I'm going to pay fucking $900 for a Pro Tools license. Just don't. <laughs> Just yeah. don't. All the shit has a 30-day demo. Just try it. If you can't make a beat in a month, you should probably try something else. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> Go. North Face Jacket. Waves L316 limiter. You can really just like, oh, this song is sus. I wish I had one plugin that fixed that. And it does do that. <laughs> it's fab, fab oh, actually, actually, no. no. I have a funny one. I'm not joking either. 3X oscillator. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, yeah. Wow, that was. I guess I'm there's a following out there. I'm changing my answer actually to Pro Q. The EQ from Fab Filter. It's amazing. It's it pretty changed lit. my life. It actually changed my life. Pro Q2. Yeah, the second version. Nice. All right, next question. Come on. Everyone's like, man, I learned about Puckets. Emeralds. What's up? He's in Can Smash. Can we get a Yo. Star Fox album, guys? I've Who's been doing it? He's in Smash. Hey, Cutman. Cutman. Hey, Cutman. I have a question. Can we get a Star Fox album? Can we I do think, it? I, th I think we Cut can. Man, yeah. please. Next question. Come on. <laughs> Someone's got to have something. Good. Go. Tell Tutorial. Me. I'm sorry I killed you. <laughs> Hi. That's, that's, that's very sweet of you. <laughs> uh, I'm always working on different tunes. I'm doing some more uh, vocal covers with my robot voice. I'm going to put out on probably louder. Uh, I'm also working on some uh, bootleg Mega Man 2 hip hop mix tracks. That my favorite! <laughs> I was playing that at the uh, DJ booth earlier. Um, and I'd like to do a, a proper Game Chops, uh, you know, full length this year as well. Let's and I want to do a Star Fox album. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yo, seriously, Someone though. Has to do it. Seriously, the music in, like, the Super Nintendo game is so good. Yeah, yes, it it's is. Really Every good. track is fire. <laughs> we'll be right back with a Star Fox album. <laughs> We're going to run upstairs really quick. Just fart it out. Just, a, just FYI, a little teaser. Uh, I am planning to release a Star Fox single next month. <laughs> it's just like that. Ask it, you shall receive. Our, we have two minutes. Any other questions? Best oh, best. For, I got go, one. I got one. Hold on, let me go. Use EQ8. Just kidding. What was your thing? Only use, D, what, only use stock plugins, James? Is that what you're gonna say? Yes, yes. I got that a good was one. that was a producer. I have a really um, good one. I can give you a really valuable tip. Um, having all, but the most important mixing been? technique that I could pass on to a beginner is using separate mixer tracks. Like every, basically everything in your mix, put it on a separate mixer track, and you need to have a parametric EQ plugin on pretty much every single one of those, so you can cut out the frequencies that you don't need, yep. and that allows you to, you know, let things sit into the mix better and just. Just having the maximum amount of control and keeping everything separated. You know, keep if you want to bust something later, you can, but keep everything separate and EQ everything. Keep it organized. All right, That's next question. Go. So you don't have to do that part. <laughs> trilogy. Metroid Trilogy? What trilogy? Not in Smash. Ooh. Not in Smash. 
the Earthbound, actually, the Earthbound oh, music Earthbound. is kind of, it's kind of hard to get at it. There's licensing. It's boring. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody it's wants to hear Nobody wants to hear that, that talk. We can't have the game yet because of the licensing. Yeah. What you got? Go. It's Kanye's worst album, but... Um, I listened to it. Uh, that, I just... I just don't know what that guy's doing anymore. <laughs> like, some of it's good, but some of the lines are just so stupid. Like, actual stupid lyrics that just don't... It's not very... It's not lit. It Listen, sucks. Wolves right. came out. Wolves is out. How do I what? He doesn't really. He doesn't actually deal with that stuff very well. It's mostly by calling me, actually. How do you fear and doubt? Listen, embrace it, and just be like, "Hey, fuck everybody." Let it motivate you. Hey, I actually say that phrase a lot. Fuck everybody. Yeah. It's never done. I have an answer. No, I have an actual answer for this one. I just figured it. All right, there's two answers. First answer. No piece of art is ever finished. It's only abandoned. That's right. That's a quote. Some old guy said it. I think he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Second answer. Make a list of what you want in every song. For me, it's EQ, compression, reverb, white noise, cymbals, bass line, and lead. If those seven things are in a track, it's done. If I have all that stuff and I don't have a lead, whoops. Got to add a lead, and then it's in there, and you work on it until you're happy with it. But yeah. Make that list for yourself. What, what do you hear in a song that you need? For me, it's crash cymbals and hi-hats. For you, it might be a funky slap bass. I don't know. For me. But you make that list. Slap at the bass. There you go. All right, we're over time, but I don't care. Wow. Huh? Oh, impulsively and like very fast. It's like, oh shit, flying batteries on. <laughs> and within 10 minutes, it's either listenable, like from another room at least, I like put it on and go make macaroni, and if I like, don't turn it off out of annoying, like by, before the macaroni's done, then I keep working on it. Yeah. And if I like can't even get the water to boil, I'm like, yo, this is hurting my ears, then I, then I don't work on it. Yeah. But yeah, just impulsive. Find a way that you like to make music and just like go, go, go. Uh, that's a, Drum that's and a bass. long question. Drum and bass. I, I don't really have a specific genre. I just touch everything. I do everything, but I, I do really like trap music. B video game bangers. Anime. Yeah. Bangers. House music. James says house. Yeah, house I'm gonna music. go. I'm gonna go with house music as well. Uh, obviously, we're the coolest people because of that. So I go we're the winners of oh. the panel. Hey, can I can I answer Lewis really quick after this is done? I'm gonna. I'm going to do it anyway. We really can't hear each other up here at all. What? What? Next question. No, I, said, I said when we're done. We can't hear each other. Go. Who has a question? You, go. Uh, games that meant something to me as a kid. Something that's in Smash Brothers. <laughs> as long as the character's in Smash Brothers. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> yeah, it's that Undertale. Like <clears throat> Undertale. Under Undertale. <laughs> all right, we're actually... I'm going to just... Say that we're going five minutes over, so a couple more questions. 3D Beach Party is mine. Yeah, no more squad questions, just like single questions. Corin. No, Bayonetta. Bayonetta. No, Fuck Bayonetta. Bayonetta's the shit. She's awesome. <laughs> that game was never fun. Fuck all of you. <laughs> Whoa. Anything else? You guy, go. Sam? What? Oh, that's a good idea. That's it. <laughs> I might do that. Freedom Planet's so, so good. So, did anyone play that? Yeah, well, so technically, I did do a remix of Freedom Planet. If you check out the DLC trailer for Freedom Planet, that remix in the trailer is mine. So, yes. All right, let's take one more question. Somebody may get a good one. Who hasn't got it yet? Um... Me too. Oh snap! Me too. Calling you. Yeah, out. we have. It's right here. It's CJ Burrow Queen. Throwing okay. shade. Burrow Queen's pretty good. Yeah. You gotta do that whole like. Never mind. We're diverser than some crowds. I think we are. Yeah. All right, one more question. Come on, we got a minute. Someone over here said, "Lemon." Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Yeah. No, it's Anyone. not. I disagree. I disagree. It's not dead. It'll never. The panel die. was lit. 
Great question. We got one more uh, minute. Any, uh, anybody else? Uh, All the way in the back. I just had four beers during this fucking panel. Uh, <laughs> it's lit! Six. They're all IPAs. I'm all fucking right, drunk. All right, we're out of time. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming Woo! to the panel. Please hey. visit JR at the merch booth. We're going to be around. Grab some free stickers. Thanks so much. Come hang out. Yo, I'm going to hijack this for two seconds, and I'm going to answer you, Lewis. Uh, fear and doubt is something that all of us experience, and the only thing that cures it is doing something productive. When you are afraid of failure, when you doubt yourself... Let that energy motivate you. Transmute, transmute that energy into creative pr productivity. That's some of the best advice I can give anybody. Uh, buy my merchandise. Screw all these other guys. I showed up late. I'm the cool one.